I'm telling myself, maybe is zote zingine, they will be solved if I get a kid. Because I've started thinking, oh, it's because I don't have a kid. That's why things are happening. Unfortunately, the hardest part of infertility lean is waiting for 14 days so that you can take a test to see whether all is well. So we, we went and after 14 days, it has failed. Wow. That was the most painful part. The only other solution that was remaining, it's not there. I gave him the freedom to get a girl, mm. get a kid. Let's solve this once and for all. Get what? Get yourself a lady who can conceive for you. Let's get a child and solve this. Hello, good morning and a warm welcome to LNS. My name is Lynn Gugi. Now, well, children are very instrumental in our society. I cannot help but think of the many women who do not get to experience the joy of having a child. And questions such as utaza lini, unatuletea kashosho lini, are some of those that you will hear around and what they do to you. Well, I don't think anyone can easily understand unless they are in the same situation. My guest today says Amejaribu Imekata and it's not a must and she's here to encourage so many women and also families who are going through this and now of course without further ado leo si java elegant people ni viatu tu so get, go get up here if you can na? without further ado please allow me to let my guest today introduce herself good morning morning to you Lynn. how are you i'm well i thank god amen yes you are looking so i told you this before but i gotta mm -hmm. say it you mm -hmm. are looking so beautiful thank you who is your plug <laughs> 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 Who is your flag? <laughs> Who is your flag? Send me behind the camera. <laughs> you are looking so lovely. Thank you. And please now introduce yourself. Wow. Thank yeah. you, Lynn. Thank yeah. you even for hosting me. Yes. My name is Susan. I'm Susan Juki yeah. uh, from Muranga. Uh, yes, a born again Christian and a happy lady. Yeah. Yes. You know, when they say, thank God we don't look like what we've been through, because mm -hmm. you've been through so much, mm -hmm. and to see you sitting here and saying a happy lady, mm -hmm. at what point did you realize that I have to keep affirming positive things to myself, mm -hmm. even through, even if I'm facing all the things that I'm facing? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what guides me in life, I always say that you should live positively, regardless, mm -hmm. uh, without really caring what is happening around you mm. because there is so much that is meant to bring you down yeah. that you might miss the joy of life. Mm -hmm. So it's a very personal decision that I have made. Okay. Of course, it's a journey. Yeah. You don't just wake up and decide, ah, I will live a happy life yes. because life can really serve you with things that can make you cry every yes. morning. Yeah. But it's a, just a deliberate decision that I made. Yeah. And of course, by the help of God. I yeah. would say it's by the grace of God mm -hmm. because I'm a prayerful woman. Yeah. And so by the grace of God, I've managed and I don't just smile in public even when I'm alone I smile because that's what's important you know mm -hmm. that um, you smile even in private because mm -hmm. sometimes we want to put a happy face out mm -hmm. in the public but deep down we are dying eh? true, so true. deep down we are dying so congrats on that mm -hmm. I want to get right into your story yeah. before I can ask you to ask you to ask you to ask so before I get into your story yeah. why was it important for you to share it in the first place why did did you send that email? Okay. Uh, I reached to you because I felt one, this would be a good platform to reach out to me. And you are doing a good work. And yeah. so we are waking up to see what is up with the at mm. Lins and mm. all that. Huh? Yes. So because um, uh, I feel down in me that I really need to speak up and inspire ladies, especially. Mm -hmm. I know men are also going through hard times huh? when it comes to issues with relationship, marriages, mm. and even infertility. Mm. But I'm more so inclined to a girl out mm. there mm. because uh, there is so much that I've experienced in life that I know I'm not alone. Yes. Other people are experiencing the mm -hmm, same. Mm. So I felt, why not speak about it? And why not bring some hope and show a, a lady out there who could be in the same situation and who could be wondering, is there hope for life? Because at some point in life, I felt like 
I can't face tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But since I am here, this is the tomorrow that I was afraid oh. to face. Huh? So I want to tell someone who is wondering, Kesho, what is going to happen? Yes, yes. There is a tomorrow. Is and a... it can be a happy one. Wow, that's powerful. Today is the future that you are so scared of so facing. So scared about. And here you are. Here I am. So kudos. Yeah, Please thank you. Uh, walk us through your story. Okay. And because I'm so interested in the ending. Mm -hmm. How did you get to acquire this much strength mm -hmm. to say, I am still here? Okay. Yeah. Well, so um, as I said, um, uh, I got married in the year 2012. Mm. Or rather, let me start from where I met the man. Yes. 209, I met a man who was very handsome. Mm. I believe he's still handsome. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> so I met this guy mm. and uh, our vibes clicked mm. and we were good to go. Yeah. And so after three years, we decided we want to settle down. And so I did a wedding, a very beautiful wedding, and uh, we were happy to start a family together. And so we started uh, our living together, of mm. course, now immediately after our wedding. Mm. And we did a one good year. I would say it was one good year yeah. because it was a time of uh, discovering who you are when you are in someone's heart mm. and discovering who you are when someone is in your heart mm. because now you've been left you alone with someone. Uh, and like in the face of dating where you meet and then kill to and this, yeah. day and night yes. we are together. So we had one good year, I would mm -hmm. say. And unfortunately, the second year, things started happening and uh, we went through a journey I, I would say a long journey because by then it was, it looked so long eh, mm. to fight so many things. So mm. we really had so many differences and we realized that um, there wasn't a good foundation for this. So definitely if you've not laid any foundation for any building, it's going to not last. Mm. So definitely now without a good foundation, it came clobbering down. Mm. And uh, my marriage ended. In the year 2016, that's when we realized that we've tried all we can. Mm. We had tried separating, coming back, separating, coming, a lot of dramas here and there, mm. but keeping hope that it will work. But unfortunately, uh, 2016 around December, we decided it's not working. Mm. And uh, it might end up badly mm. for both of us. Mm. And so I decided uh, I want to move out. Mm -hmm. And yes, I did. Mm. And since then, I must say it has been a good journey. Yes. What? Since you left? Yes. Oh, man. It has been a good journey. Yeah. That's what I would say. Because let me ask you, let me just go back there. Because this is something I also discuss with the people close to me. Yeah. You go into a marriage expecting it to work. Yes. No one honestly walks down the aisle with someone knowing it's going to end mm -hmm. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. For you, were you looking for it to last? Mm -hmm. And would you say mm -hmm. that you did not take enough time mm -hmm. to learn this person? Mm -hmm. Or it just happened? how it was supposed to happen okay uh, maybe i would start by saying and mm. now i would start maybe by talking to someone who is thinking of marriage mm. uh, marriage is not uh, just something you wake up and you think i'm in love with this guy i'm in love with this girl and i can do life with them marriage is an institution that requires planning and also it as i started by saying foundation mm. it needs a foundation mm. and so of course everybody because most of it you get there for love yes well, it's only maybe in uh, uh, arranged marriages mm. where you would find someone maybe went for something they never wanted mm. but most of the time we go there because i am i love, love you so God. much i cannot live without, without you. you you know but it Marriage is beyond that. It is beyond that feeling and knowing because I think uh, that's what I missed mm. because I was just looking the love bit of it. And definitely in my mind, I knew this is the man I want to spend the rest of my life with. Mm. This is a man I, can, I mm. cannot live without. Yes, yes. So as I was going to marriage, divorce was not a thing. It mm. was not any of the options that I will go and come out. Mm. And maybe just to say uh, I'm a... I'm a firm Christian who believes in families mm. and marriages. Mm. So I weren't going for trial. Yes. I was going there to make a home and to make a marriage. Mm. Yes. So it was not a trial thing for it you? It wasn't a trial. It was still mm. life do us part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Today I don't want to talk about the gentleman. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about you. Yeah. 
what do you think mm -hmm. what was your participation in making your marriage fail wow a good question because most of the time uh, especially the ladies <laughs> <laughs> If, if today to scare Duru ikipigwa pahali and husband and uh, wife are fighting, you will go and you want to say the wife is being beaten before you get to know whether it's the husband. Yeah. And unfortunately, even the men are being beaten. You know, yeah, so uh, it's a good question yes. when it's directed to what I did. Mm. I think uh, I would still say that it's a lack of planning and lack of focus mm. because i believe uh, while i was dating if i had planned and i was so focused about my life not the marriage bit of it uh, i would have not gotten into that mm. marriage in the first place mm. so i failed myself actually thank you for saying not to talk about the gentleman yeah. because he didn't fail me i failed myself Powerful. because there is nothing new that i found in the marriage that i had not seen before so uh, the thing of uh, th this issue of seeing the red flags and you want to turn them to green so that Peter, mm. that's where now the problem is. Mm. So I feel that I failed myself and probably I failed him because also I would have, you know, there is what the Bible talk of counting the cost. Yes. The Bible says you don't start building a tower before you know whether you have enough money to finish it. Oh, really? Yes. Ma, we so, got to read our Bibles. <laughs> So before you start any foundation, yeah. you should first of all sit down, count your costs, so that you don't start, you know, you'll waste materials, you'll waste time and Mabati. your energy, yeah. Mabati and all that. Then in Anguka. Yes. So what I never did, I never planned, I was not focused. Mm. So I would have planned well enough about what I want in my life. Mm. And uh, because actually most of the things that made me now not work my marriage is because of uh, the value, values part of it. Mm. The things that you value, I value. They are not learning what mm. you think is best, what I think is best. Mm. So if I had looked at that before, and now when I got into it, mm. uh, when I was doing my marriage vows, eh, I said, what were we saying? We were saying, as we never said death, we didn't, I mm. think we didn't want to bring the death in yes. the equation. Yeah. Or we said, as long as we both shall live. So as we were saying, we both shall live, I think uh, we ought to have thought that living, the life we are talking about, as long as we both shall live, how do we want to live it? Which is this life? Which is this life? So, and the fact that I never lived it as long as we both shall live, yeah. then I failed. Uh, I failed myself, yes. I failed him. Yeah. But now I say that the feeling is not that I never stayed because thing was not an option. It was the also failing, another feeling it also. Was, yes, mm. the feeling is starting it in the first place. In the first place. Yes. That's powerful because mm. I feel like a lot of times, and there's nothing wrong with it, but women, mm -hmm majority we want to be the victims mm -hmm. mean the only lifaniwa mm -hmm. but until we also go back and look at what we did what we, did, we are yes. not going to be honest yes. with ourselves so uh thank you so much for owning up yes. so now you've gone into this marriage you've come out mm -hmm. talk to me about the infertility issue mm -hmm. and where are we right now Okay. Mm. Uh, so maybe before we move out of that, yes. I would also want to encourage someone who wants maybe to get into marriage. It mm. is also good to have information. Yeah. I would say I didn't have enough information mm. what marriage entailed. Mm. I knew what I knew about marriage is about two people who love each other. So also it's very good to gather information yes. of what marriage entails yeah. so that you don't get wrongly and you yes. get into it for the sake of the people who are watching and they are struggling with inf infertility yes can i ask first before we get into infertility mm -hmm. was it the cause was it one of the cause mm -hmm. of your marriage falling apart I would say yes. Mm -hmm. I would say yes because as much as it would not be like ata upati wa toto, mm. ata toko wende upati wa toto, there is a, um, infertility comes with emotional stress. And once people are emotionally stressed, eh, you really need God to make it and you really need support mm -hmm. to make it. Mm -hmm. And uh, since that one uh, was a real issue to us because as I will be sharing, we went through a journey trying mm. to get a kid. So clearly we really needed to have a kid or rather we desired to have a kid. Mm. And so that journey also brought uh, as emotionally we were down. So I would say yes, mm. it was a factor, okay. not the only one, but a major one. A major one. A major All one. All right, take mm. us through this part of your story. 
Yeah, so after marriage, uh, we stayed for one year mm. and we decided we don't want to get a kid because we want to enjoy our honeymoon. Yes. Uh, but uh, I had come from a family where I have a sister who has no problem me mentioning about her issue okay. because after 10 years, God blessed her with a child. Mm -hmm. So uh, because I had seen my sister, her journey, so when I'm getting into marriage, I'm keen and I'm even asking the guy what would happen because by the time we are planning to get married, my sister is yet to get a child mm. and it is many years. Huh? Mm. So I was, I, I asked him, what if we get married and I suffer the same fate with, as my sister? And he was like, cool, no problem, kids are not the only thing. Mm. So that is an information that I have back in my mind and it's something I do not want to experience because mm -hmm. I had seen what my sister was going through but mm -hmm. I thank God that for her she had a supportive we were there for her mm -hmm. the husband was there for her mm -hmm. but again I wouldn't have wanted to go, to go through, through that. that so when we got married I was advised even actually by her that Nisianze me appeals because maybe I'm trying to uh, to protect myself getting pregnant and mm. maybe I don't even have the ability because that's what many people do. Mm. You, you're taking pills not to get pregnant and maybe you don't even need them. Mm. Because also, uh, one of the beautiful journeys of being infertile is you're not good that. You know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> so many things that yes. women do for yeah. you, you are mm. free. You, you're free. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you at what point it becomes a switch yes. thing because it's a woman who is married then would hear me say that yeah. she would be like, uh -uh. what are you saying? Yes. So yeah, so after one year, we decided then in that one year, because I don't want to take any pills or to go any family planning, what yeah. we'll do is the natural one. So sisi na kale da pale, si tumesoma, si tunajua kuhesabu. Yes, yes. Tulihesabu. So one year went by, so the second year now we said now we are good to go. We can start um, having our family, the mm -hmm. kids now mm -hmm. to come in. So the first uh, month, second, third, fourth, eh, nothing is coming. Mm -hmm. So me, I start getting bothered. What is happening? I tell my guy, eh, I think we need to go to the hospital. Then he's like, Ni mapema sana, why are you worried? But now me, I'm thinking, I've not used any pills. I've never used them because what normally happens is that... Um, after family planning, you will be advised that maybe it will take you like six months before you conceive. Yes. Right? But now for me, I'm considering I've not taken anything. So I was expecting immediately I'll be able to conceive. Yes. But now five months down the line, it's not forthcoming. So what is happening? My hubby is not both that and he's okay with it. He's saying it's still early. Mimi kama Susan, I need to know what is happening. So I need to go to hospital. When I went to the hospital, also the guy told me, mm, one year, it's still early. Mm -hmm. Normally, you advise that the time they would start saying you have fertility issues is after two years mm -hmm. of trying. Mm -hmm. So if you've not tried for two years, they still tell you it's not still time early. to start all those Why? tests. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I went and I waited. You know, uh, uh, and it was funny because I was waiting for a year to end. And the end of us in the why am I not conceiving? So mm -hmm. two years came to an end and I'm not conceiving. I still went back to hospital because still then my hubby is like, uh, Ni mapema, why mm -hmm. are you so worried? Mm -hmm. And so I was, for me, I was bothered. So I went and uh, yeah, I was still there two years trying to conceive. Maybe there is a concern. So to Nahitaji to start now the test. Mm -hmm. Now that's where my journey started. Because now I need to test and know what exactly is happening. Because I'm living a normal life. I'm having my periods like any other girl. There is nothing unusual mm. with my body. Mm. So now we have to start the mm -hmm. test and get to know what exactly is happening. Mm. So I went through some tests and um, the test that was able to diagnose my problem is one I did uh, HSG. HSG was a very painful test eh, that was done. Eh? That is when now they realized that the issue was me because I have a blocked fallopian tube, mm -hmm. uh, but it was one that was blocked. So I was told there is hope because the other one can and block. At mm -hmm. uh, this time, when we were trying to talk with uh, my ex-husband, we were talking of uh, going for a test and for him, he's saying, Mini koto sawa. So I'm wondering, do you have a kid out there and he's a sinner but I know Nikosawa. So now I go with this information, good news to him and bad news to mm -hmm. now both of us. Mm -hmm. Because now it shows it's me who has the issue. So yeah. to, of course now I shared with him and I told him I have blocked fallopian tube. 
that's where so we were advised since it is one mm. that is completely blocked mm. and uh, you've not still been able to conceive even with the other one what happens is we can try to unblock the other one the one which is blocked to a channel but the other one which is supposed to help you yes. and you've not been able to conceive yeah. we can try to yeah. unblock it mm. yeah so i went for for the surgery trying to unblock the tubes and um Infertility is a bad journey because it has discouragement along the way because even as you're doing it, the doc is telling me, uh, we will do this, but it is 50-50. You may conceive and you may not. Mm -hmm. And then he goes ahead and says, if you don't conceive in the next six months, then it means now you're completely blocked. So we won't even try to unblock because the tube is very small, it's something very mm -hmm. small. Mm -hmm. So once something has been inserted there mm -hmm. and it has not unblocked, huh? it means there will be some adhesions that will come yes. with the healing, yes. meaning now it's completely yeah. blocked. Huh? So I was given six months uh, to go and try conceive. And if I don't conceive in those months, then kaput, it's not happening mm -hmm. naturally. Yeah. We went, tried for the six months, it Nothing. didn't happen. Nothing happened. So the surgery was not successful. So now the next thing was to think about IVF. IVF is very expensive, very, very expensive. And um, it requires, of course, now the money. It requires money and also it requires a lot of soberness because before now we come even to the IVF, you can imagine now what we are already going through in our mind and all things and thinking, oh my God, you cannot conceive naturally. So what is supposed to so there? Are, and actually there are so many other options, not just IVF. You can do, you can do, you can do adoption. Yeah. You can go and just adopt mm -hmm. and that is it. Mm -hmm. And um, you can also pray and yes. wait on God. So don't want to say, okay, your case is nini, you just have to look for money. Mm -hmm. You can adopt, you can wait on God. Mm -hmm. And now the one that today I advocate is that you can decide, you can choose to be happy without a kid. You can say, well, I wanted to be a mother. It's not happening. These are the results from the doctors. So be it. Well, what else can, what I, else can I do in life? Yes. Who am I without mm. a kid? Mm. Because definitely even them that have kids, they have their personal journey to go. So without this child, who can I be? So the options are not just limited to the treatment. Mm. There is an option of God. Yes. I always talk about God. So God, you can leave it to God mm. for a miracle. You can choose like I've chosen today. Lean today, uh, I have no desire for a kid. I remember I have mentioned this before and there are people who are asking me, why have you lost hope? Don't you believe in miracles? Don't you believe there is God? I do. I believe in miracles. And I always say that a child is a gift. A gift is supposed to be given. You don't keep saying, please give me this gift. You know, a gift, like Zawadi. Yes. Ile, you I, can't force someone to give you give a you, gift. Yes. You, it's actually, it's you who sit down and yes. think, I need to gift somebody someone. this thing. Yeah. You know, the, what has made it more difficult is because uh, in our African society, we have um, tendency, when I'm Susan today, nikipata mtoto, mama so and so, mama so and so. So when we go maybe to a gathering, hey mama so and so, mama so and so, so when they, they come to you Susan, and you see maybe today I might not look so much like I need to be called mama so and so, but as time goes by, kuna mtu atakuangalia shindwe, why are they calling you by your yes, name? Yes. They should be calling you mama so and yes, so or yes. Mrs. so and so. You see now that one, that is mm. what brings the crisis. Mm. You realize that someone is getting no stress because people will start asking. I remember in, uh, in my second year of mm. trying, mm. Actually, now the first of trying, yes. because the first one I wasn't trying. Uh, someone called me, I wouldn't want to mention the mm. name or to say the relationship, mm. because it's not about tarnishing someone's yeah. name. But I would also say that we need also to be sensitive as, as a society. Because I remember someone called me, this is the time now I have realized I cannot conceive. So I'm not even sharing with anybody. It's me and my then husband. So you've not started telling the outside world what is happening. So someone calls and asks me, uh, if I got a child then she would have been named Wamboi. I remember even my, during my wedding, the way of making fun was Mama Wambo kuja, Mama Wambo fanya vile. So I was called and asked, uh, when is Wambo coming? 
and I'm like, mm, okay, she will, she will be coming. Uh, I think what they were testing whether I'm expecting or something. Eh? Yeah. And uh, they go ahead mm. and tell me, you know, kama angekua saizi, maybe angekua uku, na cheza na yeye, and all wow. that. They don't know what they are doing to me. Because they start, they start making me feel, oh, there's something missing. There's something, even the society now have started feeling that yes. uh, there is something, something missing, missing in this whole thing. You are not complete unless you have a child. Thank you. Until you're called Mama Fulani, Mama Fulani. and your husband is not complete and his is called yes. Baba Fulani. So they would be wondering why is he moving with the age mate when I Baba Fulani and Yeye and I by their name. Yes. Wow. Yep. So you do IVF, you pray, how, how, how was how was your husband uh, during this time? Would you say there are times when he was supportive and then it started withdrawing? Mm -hmm. And where were you getting your strength from? Okay. So when I got now diagnosed and the issue was me, yeah. I would say that uh, he supported me. Mm -hmm. Because uh, he came in and uh, we started now, he assisted me to seek for yes. uh, for help. Where can this be done? Because mm. remember, we've been told you can go and try the, mm. the, 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 the surgery mm -hmm. part of it. Yeah. So I would say he was there. And um, uh, by then, uh, we, we had a medical card. So he offered me his medical card. So I would say financially, I was also catered. Yes. Because he came through and enabled me now to go through the, mm. the, the, the test and all yeah. that. Um, most of the time, physically, we were with him. He would accompany me to the hospital. Mm. The beautiful thing is the... Men is as long as he and and all that. Yes. They are cool. So I would say I would thank him that he was physically with me. Mm. Only that I would say that uh, maybe it'll be due to lack of information. Mm. He wasn't there emotionally with me. I would feel I'm alone in mm. this journey mm. because for me it's a big deal. For him it's not a big deal. But you know, it by then it really bothered me. I needed to have this kid. So it really bothered me. And the journey is not sweet. The journey is not sweet. So one, when I went for the surgery, mm. the doctor, I did it in Gakan, and the doctor was so positive about it. He was telling me, ah, you are so young. Yeah. Then he was like, ah, your womb is perfect. Then he was, then he was showing me that it's not a big issue. Mm. So here I am, after the surgery, I'm so expectant because yes. he's telling me everything else is good. Yeah. And this one, this tube, it will work. Mm. After, after the surgery, of course, there is that testing they do with those diets, yes. and they say, Perfect. Perfect. Now you're good to go. Mm -hmm. So by that time, you've gone and you're so excited that yeah. now this is the time. Mm. This time you don't involve so many people. You don't want many people to know what you're going through. So even in terms of the threads you're keeping, umeanza kujidistance kidogo. Because you don't want them to know what you're trying. Unataka tu wakuone na mtoto, they shouldn't really get to know the, the journey. details. The details mm. of what is happening. Mm -hmm. So six months are over and you've not been able to conceive. Now that one started weighing me down. Mm. Because kind of infertility, I'm fighting uh, my marriage to work. Because now, uh, apart from the infertility bit of it, we had our issues. And this is what I'm talking about. Looking at the values and the visions that you have. Mm. So we are really fighting for other things. And now we have another issue here in hand. And in it, I'm saying, and I'm telling myself, maybe is it zote zingine, they will be solved if I get a kid. Because I've started thinking, oh, it's because I don't have a kid. That's why things are happening. So I'm really trying hard this side to get a kid so that this side things can work. So which you, is a very mm -hmm. um, an informed way of thinking. So you thought by getting a child you would keep your husband? Yes. I thought once we get a child, because I was looking at so many things, uh, because ours was more emotional. So I'm wondering what is happening? Why are we not able to get along? And uh, it all was looking well when we were getting married. So I was thinking, once the child comes in, and actually there are people who are advising us that, well, they would know when we have fights, because sometimes it will involve me getting out yes. of my marriage. Yeah? So when they come in to help you, so they will tell you, I think you guys need to get a kid. Mm. Once you get a kid, you'll be so involved in bringing up your child, is if it was in a dogo dogo, you wouldn't be bothered about yeah. So that one would stick in my mind. Yeah. And I would really want to get a child yes. so that I capture the attention of this man and uh, we will have a complete family. Because to me, I thought, 
it's not yet a complete family without a child do you think many people do that because this is not the first time i'm hearing someone say i thought a child would make us uh, mm -hmm. stick together mm -hmm. do you think actually some people get children to make their marriages work so many people and even even funny enough if there is also there is the primary infertility and the secondary there's someone mm -hmm. who has one kid they are fighting and she's thinking if i give this man like three four kids they will change a very wrong way of thinking there are people who are doing and the the, the unfortunate part of this is uh, you are exp now the other human being who are mm. now coming into your pains mm. and like now where myself I was just fighting me and him mumeleta mtoto in the equation now you also making them to go through the pains yes. because they, then they don't understand what mm. is happening with daddy and mommy mm. and now the funny bit of it is that you want to get two three four because you are thinking the moment you have all these kids he will be okay or she will be okay there yes. even men who think will be biangu ni kisirani because hajaza me my advice would be if your marriage is not working before you bring kids into this you expose them into this mess first of all make up your mess because the child will never come to solve your issues unless you are saying mimi nataka kupata ndio nitoke niende na mtoto but also don't do it emotionally mm -hmm. sit down because you can even do it when you're not with this man but as long as you're in that marriage that ideal of getting kids so that you solve your issues kids are a solution mm -mm. yes it's not a solution yeah it's not a solution yes mm -hmm. Yeah so by then that is what i was thinking yeah. and uh, i don't know where to say thank god that it never happened because <laughs> it did not have worked yes. yeah <laughs> so it yeah uh, it didn't happen now the time i was told about the only option now i had remaining was ivf mm -hmm. uh what the strength where i drew my strength from my parents my parents are very supportive and they are very prayerful wow. and by now my sister had already gotten a child so there is even that testimony that you know she had been there she yes. had walked the journey yeah. so they were very supportive mm -hmm. and they were praying with me mm -hmm. although they didn't know why i'm not conceiving you know these like african setup where you don't discuss some details with, with your, your parents, parents. Yes. but i want to imagine maybe my sister used to tell them yes. but me i wouldn't imagine mm -hmm. even telling my dad i mean but i think it's a good thing people can talk but mm -hmm. for me i wouldn't tell but they knew one year has gone two years has gone so they knew something mm -hmm. was not so they were very supportive when i'm admitted in the hospital i would tell them i'm in the hospital but i don't want to tell them Why? exactly the unfortunate part of that is uh, you need support you need you're not well psychologically so you don't know exactly you don't figure things out if only people would know that talking helps yeah. because people will come they will mm. talk to you they'll maybe give you exper the experiences they will also shut from telling you zarisha wewe mtu because now they know you have you're going through a challenge mm. but now iki tu umejiwekea you are going mm. through it you're not able to and you're already feeling like you're not woman enough yes you're already feeling like you're not wife enough mm -hmm. because kids are missing in the picture so mm -hmm. how do you even start telling people yes it's hard though yeah mm. so i went for my first uh, trial yeah. for ivf again i meet doctors who are very hopeful with me they're telling me you are young your body is perfect apart from the tubes everything else is okay you you also don't want to tell people you are going through the IVF because the world calls them testitude babies maybe we need to to clear that and tell people whether testitude testitude or whatever you call them they are babies there is nothing and uh, it involves a man and a woman there is nothing that is made in the lab yes. you know how people put it look like Only it's funny lab. these are lab you know they look like they are not real human mm, beings mm. they are because it involves a man and a woman for yeah. this cat, uh, kid to come up yes. you know so yeah i went the first time i went for it and i was so hopeful because the doctors are saying everything is okay and uh thank god once the the my 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 ovaries were taken mm. and uh, the the guys eh, the, everything was successful mm. the it fertilized yeah and so they were very happy and they told me this is it you're going to get a kid so i went i got them unfortunately the hardest part of infertility lean is waiting for 14 days so that you can take a test to see whether all is well so we, we went and after 14 days it has failed wow that was the most painful part mm -hmm. for me emotionally mm -hmm. 
to hear the hope that you waited, the only other solution that was remaining, it's not there. Mm -hmm. That is the time that I felt so, that's the time I lost hope actually. And I felt all along the path, uh, there was a point I would feel I want to take my life. I don't want to continue living this kind of trying to make things work, things are not working and all that. Huh? But now this time it really did hit me and that also I saw it did hit yeah. the guy yeah. because you have put all you could. Remember even as I said we were using a medical card, the other things that you don't use a medical card, there is transport, there is there is so much, there is medication that you take before yes. going for the IVF mm. which are not also cheap, mm. they are very expensive and even to mention IVF, many IVF facilities, that they don't take medical cards. So you, have, you need to have the cash. So it's just by the grace of God that as we were able to, mm. to use that. But most of them, they don't take. So mm. it is cash that you have to pay for that. So it was so hard, hard for me. I remember that is a time my husband was not even able to console me because, I mean, I felt like this is it. After that, I told him, you know, I think we need to think of something different. Of course, they told us that we can still try it a second time, but uh, I gave him the freedom to get a girl, mm. get a kid. Let's solve this once mm. and for all. Get what? Get yourself a lady who can conceive for you. Let's get a child and solve this. Wow. Because I don't want to ever again experience that pain. I don't want to ever, you know, and also you are looking at him and you're wondering, he don't deserve this. Why him, he's okay. I mean, he has been tested and he's being told he's okay. And true to his, they, you know, the embryos were okay when they were being implanted mm. in me. Mm. So, so we said, we decided, I told him now, I think at this point, I can allow you to have another woman, get a kid. And let's just do life. What I wasn't sure about is who will be this woman? Will she be a second wife or who will she be? Yes. But the idea was get a kid. Because, and this is where many people go wrong. Most of the time we are doing something not for with the right purpose. Because if you look at it, even when you're allowing your husband to go get a kid, it means you're not getting a kid for yourself. It wasn't about you. You wanted to please him and to please the society, that's why you're giving him a leeway, go and get a kid. Mm -hmm. So we started considering that, that he would get a child out there. But of course it wasn't uh, as easy to, to talk about, but it just seemed like the only option that was remaining. Mm -hmm. But then we said, since we still have another uh, option that is remaining, because sometimes when you go through IVF, mm -hmm. uh, it is expensive to start. Uh, but once you start, if there are some, you are able to leave some fertilized embryos mm -hmm. in the laboratory, you can still go for them. So we had preserved some. So I, I decided I'll do it for the second time. This time they have looked everything else that made the first one to fail. So they are telling me, you start a very good chance now for this one because the other one we cannot really tell what happened mm -hmm. so they are putting everything else into uh, perspective so mm -hmm. that you don't fail again mm -hmm. a second time i went so hopeful again it failed now when that one failed i think it left me now with i will never want to try this thing again because you even it makes you when you're not trying you are more better off but now when you're trying and you're so hopeful and, and you know it's it forthcoming and you have read testimonies, you know, the way you go to hospital and before they start, they want to show you their success rate. So they, they gave us a success rate of 76 for the institution. So we were like, oh, this is a good one. Mm. And now they are saying, putting the factors of my age and everything, my health condition. So when it failed the second time, now that was... That was bad enough because you've mm. really wasted your time, yeah. emotions, emotions, everything. So it failed for a second time. Mm. After IVF, I'm not sure there is any other thing apart from God helping you. Uh, surrogacy would come in when you have a problem with your womb. Mm. But now here I have no problem with my womb. So I wouldn't take that route. So that, because if it was about my whoop, then maybe we would have tried. Yeah. But now, since it is not, so that is when now I realize that uh, it seems like I'll never get a child unless maybe God intervenes 
or unless um, we do adoption mm. or I, the same path we had opted, mm. I'll allow my guy to go and get child out there. But I would say this, the fact that my VF fail doesn't mean IVF don't work. Yes. They do. Mm. Their success rates mm. that are, they are I mean, their success, their success rates are really high. Mm. Mm. Yes. Man, that must have been a journey. Let me ask, did he go and finally get a child out there? Uh, not when we were with him. Mm -hmm. uh, he got, he, of course, now today he's blessed. He's, he has okay. two kids, so mm. he went ahead and got kid, but mm. not when we were with him. Mm -hmm. uh, that was now when we decided it's not working. It's so over. he went ahead and got kids. But mm. by that time, because now we were we are thinking of that, but since we are not really co in one, you know the way this marriage, apart from Mumtoto, you're fighting other, other things, things. Eh? so you're not really even in one. Like you sit down, you are so not we would even discuss. In one. Yes. You know, we would discuss, and you know the Bible is very clear. God commands blessing where there is unity. So you're asking God to bring blessing, and there is no unity. As it I told you, work. God is not moved. What he has said, he has said it, mm. and that is it. Yeah. So as here, we are fighting, and yes. we are still calling heavens to open and yeah. flood us with blessings. It's going to not happen. Mm. So this time, we are considering we need to maybe to get someone, the how to get this someone and who she will be in our lives. Mm. But don't have to be a polish her, because mm. before that, we get to sharp Ghana over other things. Mm. You know, so all those things. And um, I thank God. For me, I would say, I thank God it never happened. Because uh, there are things I look in life, there are so many children today who need care. So if I needed to offer motherly love to someone, definitely I can get. But it's so unfortunate to bring someone into this world for them to suffer. Yeah. Because you, you, are, you, you, know, you are transferring, you are distributing your pains. Where else you need to heal you yourself. So uh, I would say that, mm. God, that it didn't happen that way. Mm. And also that he didn't get a child when I was still there. Because I'm imagining then maybe probably it could have been messy because you yeah. don't know how this lady they, would be mm. and what would happen. Let me ask you. Mm -hmm. So your marriage out, um, relationship out. Now do you talk to a man and be like, because your woman who does not end mm -hmm. with you not having a child, mm -hmm. have you tried other relationships now? Uh, have you tried that? And when you do, do you go and first tell the man, mm -hmm. if we are going to try this, this mm -hmm. is what you need to know about me? Yes. Mm. Uh, what I have done is that mm. uh, I'm so open about it. Yes. Uh, I thank God because after the healing, and I would say that I would want to talk to a lady and tell them that you will heal. The yes. pain, today it looks so painful and it looks like you can't heal, mm. but God and time has a way of healing yes. our hearts. Eh? Yeah. And the moment now you heal, now you no longer feel like it's an issue that you need to mm. hide. Mm. Now you become, once you become comfortable, you know the way you're comfortable being called yes. lean. Yes. You go out telling people, I am lean. Yes. Where, where it matters that yes, is eh? because yes. you don't stand at the road and shout. Am, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, to those and wherever it matters, you become now comfortable talking about it. For example, I'm now saying it publicly. So if I will ever get married, it means that that man already knows my story. But yes. even before then, if uh, I would, uh, but I think I've tried it only once yeah. whereby i realized um kind of we are clicking and so even before it goes far i tell you yes. i tell you this is my story mm. i was once married mm. i am now divorced and i have fertility issues and i'm no longer interested in having kids are you okay with that the unfortunate thing eh? so when i opened that the only now that you asked me whether i was in a relationship yes, yes i was in one yeah. and i opened about that and he was open and he said i also don't like the kids vibe and so we are good to go but with a disclaimer that god can make it happen so if i get one what will happen yes. you divorce someone mm -hmm. because it's also good huh? you sit down and agree with someone they yeah. tell you mimi spendi watoto mm -hmm. and it could be true kabisa kabisa hawapendi watoto and then in marriage kakuje yes. what will happen because yeah. there are people also who fight because the lady is pregnant yeah. i've seen people actually have had friends and i was laughing with one of them and i was saying this life is funny you your husband is fighting you because you're pregnant actually they at some point went different ways mm. but they reconciled way later yeah. but they were fighting because the, preg the wife is pregnant. pregnant others are fighting because, because you are not, not able getting to pregnant. get pregnant yeah. You know? yeah so i discussed that and mm. it was cool mm. but unfortunately we didn't get into 
mm. that serious into getting into okay. marriage. Yeah? Yeah. Having gone through marriage, mm. I would say even for men, please don't take what you think is not what you want because of other factors, maybe mm. because of beauty, maybe because of uh, time, yes. you're feeling now it's time to marry, so yeah. you just pick anybody. Yeah. Me, I always say you'd rather not marry all, marry late. Mm. As late as 60, yeah. rather than marrying at 25 like I did at 24 and get it wrong. Mm. Because the journey is painful and not good. And it brings you dreams come crumbling. Because mm. you can imagine, I wasted five good years. After that, because now after now separating, of course even after separating, there is that bit of dealing yes. with the divorce yes. and all that, mm. the emotional, the, all that, mm. the pain that comes with mm. it. Eh? So you waste another time. By the time you are healing, so much time has been lost. God is gracious. He's, he's able to give us the former and the latter rain. Mm. However, instead of you wasting all that time, get it right. Build yourself. Build yourself. Get it right. Get it right. Mm. Don't move because of any mm. other thing. Mm. And I always say for me, for me to be able to live the way I am, single and happy and not looking forward for kids, is because there are other dreams that I want to focus to. Kando na hii. Kando na kuolewa na kupata watoto and all that. There is a life. Mm. So I want to live a life and forget everything else. Yeah. Yes. Powerful. I want to wind up. Mm -hmm. But before I do, and maybe you can also take this opportunity to talk to us about things you think we haven't discussed. Mm -hmm. The African context, what are we getting wrong about kids? Uh, I would say the very major problem or the wrong concept that we have is mm. that a family is complete once a child comes into the picture. Uh, because it, it can even actually be a choice that you don't want to bring up a child. Because, and you see, there is a saying, I don't know whether it's just in my mother tongue, mm. or whatever the yes. others take mm. it. Uh, there is a saying that says, um, of course I'll translate it, mm. that um, you have to give birth to pay because you were born. So, and I thank God because my parents were so supportive. And I remember my mom telling me, you, you owe me nothing, that you want to give birth to pay me. So you see that kind of mentality that you are born, you have to pay the price. You know, not even the price, like it's, it's a denny you've been. Yes. So you have to pay this yeah, denny. Yeah. I think we need to change that narrative. We need to know once you give birth to a child, that child is a complete human being with mm. their life. Mm. They can live it the way mm. God directs them mm. and the way they think is mm. right. Mm. But you don't now think of telling them you have to pay the, yes. the denny. Yeah. There are people actually who will ask you, even if you don't want to get married, get a kid. Why would someone have that mentality? Because they are thinking a kid is the, the, the most well. I'm not refusing because if we were not born, then how, how would the world be would be? Yeah. But then let it be a personal choice. Yes. That, and it should be when once you're prepared. Yeah. Because you see also there are people who are getting kids because of the pressure, because the society wants them to get mm. kids. The ears are going, and uh, someone anakuliza, ujapata mtoto na unajua na zeka. Mm. Asivu kipata mtoto, uzea itaacha kutuja. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yes. You, it, it's, it's not like mm. once you get the child now, how uza zeka. Uza in a pose. You know, you will still zeka whether yeah. you have a kid or whether yeah. you don't have a yeah. kid. So this mentality of the African mm. society thinking that uh, every person who was born, they have a denny to pay, mm. so you have to give birth. Mm. It is wrong. It is wrong. And any time we talk about marriage, people think of father, mother, and children. So, so if you are now, there are no children, then this home is not complete. Mm. For me, I say a home is complete with or without. Yeah. People talk of adoption. It's a good idea. Watch your what to pressure or adopt. Mm. If they don't want to adopt, let them still do their lives. Yes. So it's not like uh, now that if you don't get kids, you have to adopt. Mm. Me, I would say, let us normalize that, accepting people as they are. If, why is it that if someone has another problem, like let's say they don't have a harder, mm. we are able to live with them and we accept them and we agree that they will only be using one hard because that is what they are. I think also in the infertility, we sh should also allow people, now that they are not able to conceive, leave them. Leave them alone. If you have money to look for, is any other adultions. treatment very well and very good mm. if you don't have don't kill yourself for mm. it there are people who are selling properties to afford to pay for ivf my question is you have 
done it and you have gotten that child utampeleka wapi umeuza nyumba yako trying to get a child ataishi wapi mm. you know that is the wrong information that is causing us to make decisions that mm. are not right mm. yes i love that anything else you would want to add before we wind up mm -hmm. and what message for any person that is struggling mm. men included because men also have infertility issues yes. men included mm. looking at that camera what would you want to tell them mm -hmm. and also where can people find you okay mm -hmm. so my message is uh, is these two people whether you're already married or you're planning to get married uh you are so lucky if you've not the bible says even paul talked about those who are going into marriage it's a hard thing mm. so he was even advising even him himself he was not married he was advising there if you are able to stay without marriage yeah. the better that is bible <laughs> yes. not susan saying yes, yes. Yeah. if you're not uh, if you are able to stay without marriage the better mm -hmm. but if you have to go into it then go prepared and know that it's not just another institution before you get married plan and know exactly why are you getting married don't mm. just marry because time has come because years the, the, the time because even as you get married you still have years has it as mama because now you are married yeah. and it's all not all marriages if it's not god ordained it will not be happy thereafter mm. because people want to get married to have a happy ending it's not always the case so what do we do so that we don't get it wrong the only thing we need to do is that you have to get prepared of what you are getting into get the right information of what you are getting yourself into have mentorship usikuwe mjuaji sana because young people we think we know it so much unfortunately we know very very little mm -hmm. so have information listen to people who have gone before you mm -hmm. to someone who is fighting infertility i would say that one i'm sorry that you are going through it because it's not a good journey nobody would wish to go through that journey my prayer would be that everybody is able to conceive naturally and without struggles one thing i would say that if you have a kid appreciate god because giving birth does not just involve sleeping around and getting pregnant there are people who uh sleep and sleep and do it and do it but they are not getting pregnant if you're not able to conceive don't kill yourself for it it is painful i know i've gone through the journey i know it is painful but the message i have is it is possible to heal from the pain and it is possible to live a complete life i am living a complete life and i'm not intending to try getting kid because you expose your body lean to so much you want to do surgeries you want to do herbal sometimes people uh, direct you to some medication which has other effect to your body trying to get something and if it's not god time it won't happen mm -hmm. it is okay to try getting treatment but if the treatment are not responding for you live your life mm -hmm. be happy we are not here to live forever so if you keep <laughs> crying and getting sad and all that life will still move on other people will be happy god remains to be god so get yourself things that can make you happy build up your your life i would say one thing that has helped me is that i'm concentrating with building myself as susan and i'm forgetting everybody else and i'm just me and god and being happy mm -hmm. yeah so if um to get to me i'm a content creator yes. i think i did say yes. that i'm a content creator and yeah. so why did i start suzy uledadem my youtube is suzy uledadem the reason mm. i started is that i want to pass the, the information of there is happy and joy adding after some pains you it is okay to go through pain you can go through pain so most of the time i want to share how my life has been how i am able now to live a happy life mm. and more so to inspire people because my channel is holistic yes. i talk i want to inspire people especially the young people all round that is not just we don't live a life talking about love 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 mm -hmm. there are other dreams that need to be achieved you need to grow yourself as an individual you need to achieve you know even when if a man or a woman is coming into your life they need to get a complete package mm -hmm. and you get a complete package and you complement each other yeah so you have your channel the youtube channel yes yes it's right here on the screen as we speak okay. any email address or any other contact details that someone can get to you yes uh, uh 
I'm found at Facebook, I'm Suzy Yule Dadem. Yes. Instagram, I'm Suzy Yule Dadem. Yes. TikTok, I'm Suzy Yule Dadem. I yes. move with my, my name. Yes. And so, of course, my YouTube channel is Suzy Yule Dadem. Yes. Uh, the way to find me, you can find me through Facebook, you can find me through Instagram, uh, Instagram or YouTube. Or YouTube. No, and the TikTok. Tuko, TikTok. Tuko, um, tuko, tuko, yes, to uh, so, so, TikTok. Yes, to TikTok. So those TikTok. are the avenues yes. that someone can yes. reach out to me and mm. talk to me. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, yeah. Susie. You've been amazing. Mm. Uh, thank you for sharing your story with us. Yeah. Thank you for owning it, you know. Yeah. And um, I know so many women are coming to you right after here. Yes. And they are coming to seek advice. Uh, to get some support mm. and also to open their hearts to you so you will not know what you've just done until mm. that feedback starts coming in. And just maybe yes. just to mention, sorry, mm. Mm. what I have done about that because yeah. I have been talking to people mm. and I have been sharing even yes. about marriage issues yeah. and I've been helping people. Mm. But what I've done, I've walked out of the limited information yes. so uh, at the moment i've enrolled for a bachelor in psychology yes. with technology mm. so that i'm able to advise from a professional Point view of, of it mm. so that i don't just give information uh with just that. my experience yes. and what i have gone yes. through so yeah so as time goes by we shall even be interacting yeah. professionally yeah. so i'll do counseling mm. professionally good i yes. love that go you uh you said you're already happy so yes. i don't know what else i can wish you because you already said you found happiness yes. and you know there's nothing as important as you being happy by yourself yes you cannot wait for someone else to make you happy sure you will not wait for a man to make you happy mm -hmm. a child to make you happy mm -hmm. if you have not found that happiness true, true. within you mm -hmm. so for me that's my take home yeah. the way you introduced yourself mm -hmm. i'm a happy lady yes i get to see where that's coming coming from mm -hmm. and also to you guys who are watching us back at home and maybe you are going through struggles of your own i want you to know you are you first mm -hmm. before the world gets to define you by how many kids you have uh, how successful your marriage is i want you to understand you are you first mm -hmm. before any other definitions start coming in so please do let me know what you think of today's uh, conversation what is your take home if you are struggling out there, can this be a testimony? Can you first find happiness within you before you start expecting it from other people? And as you've heard, there are so many ways to go about this. IVF to those people who can be able to afford adoption for those people who can be able to afford. And also, if you can't have also be a very good aunt to the kids around you, a good human being to the kids that are around, a good human being to the kids that are around you. Since so thank you so much for tuning in i would want to know your views on the comment section and if you want to get hold of Susie, her contact details are right here including her social media handles i will be pinning her youtube channel link on the comment section below so go out there and check her out and let her know that we appreciate you but above all guys today i just feel like i want to say thank you to all the people that have partnered with us i owe one person on a promise and i said today i want to send you to sparkling motors guys that's one of the branches by maridadi motors go get your carpet clean in that place get your sheets your duvets kila kitu they have so many branches around and i'll be leaving their contact details so if you are struggling with the carpet and you don't know where to leave you guys just call them they'll come pick it up and drop it to you ikiwa safi yeah nimelipa deni so thank you so much for tuning in guys and of course to say thank you to my incredible team that gets to do this i don't get to do it alone our creative our director ed gayabuga we have a mem here behind the lens and of course our amazing editors sam and kelvin for always compiling these episodes and making sure they reach you guys right on time how do you get hold of me info at lnn.digital that's where i'm at and of course if you are watching this without subscribing please don't do it hit the subscription button turn the notification button on and i'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m till next time god bless